Emacs has a lot of configuration settings, and it can be hard to find the really useful ones without reading through the entire Emacs manual. In this video, I'll give you a quick tour of six configuration settings that you'll definitely want to try when building your Emacs configuration. And please make sure to give this video a like if you learned something useful from it today. So uh, when you do a lot of work with Emacs, you will probably want to get back to files that you recently edited. Instead of using find file to go hunt those files down again, you can enable the recent F mode to have Emacs remember the files that you edited most recently. And as you can see here in this small little snippet, you just basically call recent F mode with the parameter one. Um, I, can, I think we discussed in a previous episode of the new Emacs from scratch series that if you pass one to a mode, it, it enables it. So this is basically just enabling the recent F mode. And after you enable this mode, you can use a command called recent F open files uh, to be shown a list of the recent files that you've edited. And you can also select from them using the number keys. So let me just pull this up in a configuration really quickly and we can show you. So this is basically this, the point where we left off from the last video. Uh, I'm going to go down to the end of the file here and type in recent F mode one. I'll use control alt x to evaluate that and now recent f mode should be turned on so if i go edit another file let's say to do.org um, and then uh let's see if i open this uh, recent f open files now the only thing it's going to tell me about right now is the to do.org file that we just edited because uh, we we already had init.el open before we edited to do.org, but if we were to press one here, it will jump us back to to do.org. So let's see, what else do we have in this folder? There's a, a readme.org file. Let's go there too. So now we're in the readme file. And if I were to use the same uh, recent F open files command, uh, now it will tell me uh, that I also have the readme.org file, which is the most recent file we opened, also with the todo.org as the second most recent file that we opened. So as you keep opening new files in Emacs, this list will keep getting updated with all of those files you're opening. It will be ordered in the most recent ones that you opened. You should just be able to use the number keys to jump to whichever file that you like. There are other packages that integrate with this behavior uh, so that uh, they can present you with an even better way to look at it and a more sort of sorted interface that you could uh, select from even more easily than what you saw there. But this is sort of what's built in with Emacs by default for uh, showing those command, uh, those files that you recently edited. Um, I, I will note that this command is not bound to a key by default, so I recommend binding it to a key if you want to use it regularly. We haven't really talked about key bindings in the series yet, but we will get to that very soon. Next thing, remembering mini buffer prompt history. So one thing you will do a lot in Emacs is enter text in, into the mini buffer prompts. So that could be, you know, meta X, I search, the describe commands, pretty much any command that you run or in a, interactive command you run in Emacs is going to take some kind of input. Um, and even shell modes that you type commands into, you know, they're basically a prompt that you pa pass input into, even though they're not in the mini, bu mini buffer. So you're going to be typing in a lot of input to prompts over time, and you're quickly realize that it would be helpful if Emacs would remember the things that you've entered into these prompts uh, the next time that you use them. So in case you want to get back to the previous things you typed, maybe you need to do a certain search again that you, you had to do before, or maybe you're looking for a particular command that you typed in, etc. And that's where the save hist mode comes in. Uh, this mode uh, basically saves a history of all things you've typed into various different mini buffer prompts in Emacs and allows you to navigate between them using the uh, meta N and meta P key bindings. That's alt N and alt P if you're more familiar with that, the traditional keyboard uh, bindings for that. Um, and these will basically give you the history. You can cy cycle through the history that you've entered into these various commands. So um, one other thing I'll mention before we jump into the example is that I like to set the history length variable to a more reasonable number to reduce the impact that loading these history files has on Emacs startup time. So for all these different things it's storing history for, it's going to store up to some certain number of uh, history entries. And the more history entries you have, the more time it will take to load Emacs. So I, I tend to set this to 25. I think it's 100 by default, but 25 is pretty reasonable, I think. And then um, after setting that history link, you can just set save hist mode to one or call that mode to initiate it. And uh, that will give you the, uh, the, the history saving behavior that I just mentioned. So let's go back to init.el here. And then if I drop down to the next line and use, uh, let's see, was it control Y? I always get mixed up on the, the default Emacs key bindings. All right, so I've got these two lines here. I'm going to uh, eval region on those. And now they should be turned on. So um, if I go into meta X, um, 
I think that it's, it's recur recalling things that are, let's see, eval region. Yeah, it may be already recur recalling some things for that. But from iSearch, let's say if I were to go to iSearch and type in save hist. Now, obviously, it's not getting a result because it's at the end of the file. But if I press Control S again and use Alt P to go to previous, you can see that it pulls up that save H again here in the echo area below. So um, this is a great way to uh, have Enoch's remember these things that you're typing in because you're going to be, you know, typing in stuff like this for searches and for, you know, describe variable or all these kinds of things quite often. So it's very nice to be able to get back to those whenever you need to. Sometimes it's convenient for Emacs to remember the last location that you were at when you visited a particular file. And the save place mode can help with that. Uh, once you turn on this mode, Emacs will drop your cursor into the last visited location in any file that you open. So if you work with a lot of different files that you kind of want to go back to, sometimes it's nice for it to open the file right back to where you were the last time you had it open. Like say for, if you had to close your Emacs session and reopen it, then it can remember that place and put you right back where you were the next time you open that same file again. And uh, luckily, this is also just a mode that you can turn on. We can just say save place mode one. I'll jump back into our configuration below here and then uh, press control Y to paste that. Press tab to indent it correctly. Use control alt X to evaluate it. And now if I were to, uh, I think if I were to close this file, let's see if I close this knit.el file, kill the buffer. Uh, no, we want to save that first. OK, then we'll kill it. And if I were to go back into init.el, now it pops me right back to that same save place mode location that was in before. So it will remember your cursor location and be able to re restore that as soon as you open the file again. So it's very helpful if you want to get back to a place you were in, like maybe you were debugging some code in a very long file, like a thousand lines or something. You don't want to have to go back and find where you were. If you had to restart Emacs, this mode can help you to get back to that location a lot more efficiently. There's also a little bit more information about that at the Emacs wiki at the save place page if you want to look at that, that for more information. Changing the location of the custom file. So if you're watching this channel, you're probably interested in writing your own Emacs configuration mostly by hand without using Emacs own customization UI. However, even if you avoid using the customization UI, some settings may cause customization variables to be added to your init.el file. So to avoid Emacs, uh, having Emacs place those variables into your perfectly handcrafted configuration file, you can use this snippet below. Let me explain what this does. So the custom file variable controls which file customization variables get stored in. By default, it's nil, which means that your customization variables will get added into your own init.el file. Uh, but if you set this to some other file path, the customization variables will be, will be written to that file instead after you save any new variables. And uh, typically when this will happen if you uh, use some kind of code that will set custom variables, like sometimes uh, use package can set custom variables for you or um, maybe if you load a theme and confirm that you want to load that theme, or maybe if you install a package with package.el, certain things like that will actually set customizable variables that will write things out to the init.el file. So we can move that to a different file. In this case, this is the custom-vars.el file by calling this locate user emacs file, which basically just takes the file name that you give it and uh, resolves the path so that it lives right next to where your init.el file is. So now that we set this custom file variable, you also have to load it because Emacs doesn't know to load it by default. So you have to use the load command, which loads any Emacs list file, tell it to load the custom file that you created. Then you give these last two parameters basically to say, don't show any errors that the file doesn't exist or don't write any messages to the, uh, the mini buffer, the echo area. Uh, I don't want to see any noise from this thing. I just want it to be loaded at startup time. So let's copy this code over to our configuration. I'm going to drop it in here at the bottom. And then I'll fix the indentation a little bit there. Um, now I'm going to uh, run this without saving. I'm not going to I'm not going to eval this code yet because I want to show you what happens uh, whenever you try to customize a variable. So I'm going to use the uh, the customize uh, save variable command uh, to demonstrate what happens when you don't have the custom file setting in. So uh, I'm, I'm going to customize this variable we talked about before history length. So history length. Now. Uh, what happened here is that since I already set the value for history length, it writes out this whole custom set variables thing to my init.el file. Uh, you can also see that there's like custom set faces, all kinds of stuff there. You don't want all that stuff in your init.el file, or at least I don't want it there. So we can delete this uh, set of lines that, that were added, and then we can go and uh, eval this code that we added to the file. So if I were to run eval region here, now these two settings are set. And I can go and uh, run the same thing again, that customize save variable. I'm going to save history length. 
and now uh, it's going to ask me which value I want to use. I'll say 30. And now it wrote, as you can see here at the bottom, to our custom vars.el file that we set up before. And if we were to go into this uh, custom vars file, custom vars, we can see that same information that was written into init.el before and now has been moved over to this other file instead. So if something has written things to your init.el file like this, I recommend going and creating your new custom vars file copy it over that information or move it basically over to the new custom vars file and then from that point forward this custom file setting that i showed you uh, will keep those things from getting added back to your init.el file so um I, I will mention one more thing about this uh, emacs can create a lot of file clutter in your configuration file folder for various reasons so check out the video that i made on the no littering package if you want an easy way to get all of that under control because there's more files that it will try to create and uh, probably you don't want those to show up in your Emacs configuration folder because you, you probably want to check that into a Git repository or something. So it's better to just have those files be moved somewhere to keep them out of the way. And that video that I make could show you how to do that. Prevent using UI dialogs for prompts. So Emacs will show UI prompts to confirm many different types of actions. And for some of them, it shows a graphical dialog box. And if you prefer to keep your Emacs workflow uh, more keyboard focused, you can turn off those dialog prompts with this setting, use dialog box nil. By default, that's turned on and uh, it will cause uh, like a file dialog or not a file dialog, but a, a pop-up box to show with buttons you have to click for like yes or no, or other possible options for various things that you might have to um, uh, to run into with Emacs. Now, certain things like confirming whether you want to save a file before exiting Emacs seems to already use the uh, the echo area, but um, there are other commands that are going to pop up the dialog. In this case, you can just set this variable to nil to prevent that from happening. Automatically reverting buffers for changed files. So one thing that could be annoying about Emacs when you first start using it is that it doesn't automatically refresh file buffers that you've opened when the file on disk has been changed outside of Emacs. This can often happen whenever you are using tools that generate some kind of text file output that you need to read in an Emacs buffer, or maybe like you're editing some code in a, in a code file buffer and you uh, go into the command line and you sync new changes from your remote repository for, from Git or something. Um, Emacs by default will not automatically refresh those buffers in Emacs, you're going to be looking at an older version of that file, which can be problematic if you're trying to edit the file and you want to get the new changes into it. So there is the global auto revert mode, which will make Emacs watch all open files for uh, for buffers that you have for changes on disk and it will automatically re refresh those buffers if they don't have unsaved changes. So it would be bad if a file changed on disk and Emacs just threw away all unsaved, unsaved changes you have before it refreshed that buffer. It will ask you first. It prompts you in the mini buffer and says, hey, do you want to refresh this buffer? And you can say yes or no. And then you can save the file or maybe uh, pull in the changes yourself, however you want to do that. So uh, global auto revert mode one is what you need to add to your configuration to do that. So I'm going to copy this over to our configuration. So let's say I'm editing my todo.org file. And uh, maybe I do something that causes the file to be edited out of band. Like I do something to the file on the file system outside of Emacs that causes it to uh, be out of date with what's inside of Emacs. Now we've already got this global uh, auto revert mode turned on. So if I go into a shell and use uh, echo hello to and put that into to, to do.org, what we'll see is uh, the hello shows up here at the bottom. And that's because Emacs automatically reverted this buffer when it saw that file change. And you can, uh, you can also see that if you turn it back off again. So if I were to use a meta X global auto revert mode that turns it off globally again, I'll save this file to be empty. I'll go into the buffer, or sorry, the shell again. I'm going to run this echo hello one more time into to do do.org. I go back into this file and that file has not been updated yet. I manually have to go use uh, meta X revert buffer to cause it to be reverted from disk. And then I confirm yes. And then it puts that hello at the end of the buffer. So global auto revert mode makes it very easy for you to automatically have your file buffers get updated whenever the underlying file on disk has changed, which I find extremely useful. I use it all the time and I think it is a great thing to have uh, turned on by default. Um, the place that this is most useful is when you're using Emacs excellent DRED package. Uh, the following setting will cause DRED buffers to automatically refresh whenever files get added or deleted from the directory that you're browsing. So if you are, uh, if, if you use DRED, uh, you can turn on this global auto revert non file buffers by setting that to T for true. And when you do that, when you're in a DRED buffer looking at a file listing, if uh, some program happens to add new files or directories to that same uh, folder on disk, the DRED buffer will be updated 
Um, that's one of the things that was kind of annoying to me at first when using Dear Ed is those buffers did not automatically update, but uh, this setting will ca uh, cause it to be uh, fixed for you. I also have another video on Dear Ed if you want to learn more about how to use Dear Ed. I think it's ex an extremely useful tool, and I'll probably do some more videos on it in the future. But for now, I have a good video that you can watch to uh, learn more about how to use that. So. Those are my must have settings when building up a new Emacs configuration from scratch. If you've been using Emacs for a while, leave a comment below and let me know which settings that I might've missed. Maybe you have your own personal favorites and things you can't live without. Definitely leave a note in the comments, let everybody else know what those are. Also, if you are a newer Emacs user and there's some fundamental behavior that you've been trying to replicate from some other editor, leave a comment below and let us know. And maybe we can try to help you figure out how to do that or maybe make another video describing how to do that in the future. Well, thanks a lot for watching this video. Don't forget to leave a like if you uh, enjoyed this. And until next time, happy hacking. We'll see you.